In this video, we're gonna make our own touch screen remote for our IoT projects using which we'll be easily able to control our appliances connected with the Blink IoT platform using this TFT touch screen. Now, previously I made the similar project but with the help of an e-paper display from Lilico, which was not easily available in the market and hence you all requested me to make the same project with an TFT touch display. And the main thing here is that we have designed this complete project on our own with a custom designed PCB unlike the previous one which was a complete ready-made board. So you'll be learning quite a lot of things as compared to the previous video. So let's get started. So for making this project, you'll need a TFT touchscreen module. Now here I have used this ILI9341 based 240x320 TFT touchscreen display with a built-in SD card reader. You'll get its purchase link in the description. After that, you'll need an ESP32 module. Now, as we wanted to make this project more compact, we use this rather than the ESP32 development board. Then we'll need a rechargeable battery and a TP4056 battery charging module. Then to regulate the voltage, we have used this HT733 LDO voltage regulator. And after that, you'll need a couple of resistors, capacitors, two push buttons and an on-off switch. I have mentioned the complete components requirement in the article whose link you can find in the description. After getting all the components, you need to connect them all according to this schematic. Now to make this project more compact and handy, we designed our own custom PCB for this project and gave its order to GLC PCB. You can also order your own custom designed PCBs by just uploading the Gerber file of the PCB project, select the color masking if you want it and just pay for your order. And after that, you'll be getting the PCBs delivered directly at your doorsteps. So try ordering your own custom designed PCB from JLC PCB to make your project looks neat and more compact. Now after getting those PCBs, we started shouldering the components on it one by one. And after shouldering them all, it looked something like this. Neat and handy. Well, you may have noticed some extra connectors here, but don't worry, they are attached for some other projects. Now after the hardware part, we decided to make a case for it and we found this black box in the market. Now with the help of Kedar, we were able to cut down a window inside this box by which we were easily able to fit our project in it. With this, the hardware and the casing part is done. Now we are just left with the coding part. So let's start with the coding part of this project. So here is the code used for this project. Let me just go through this code and explain you all the important part. So first of all, all the necessary libraries are declared here. So you need to have this library called as tftespi.h installed on your computer. Okay. Now if you don't have this library, then just go to sketch into include library into manage libraries. Now here just search for tft underscore espi press enter and here is the library which you require uh, to compile this code okay so just click on install and this library will automatically install on your arduino id that's it after that uh, here as you can see there is one new header file declared which is xbm.h now this is nothing but the image file like the hex formatted image file which will be shown onto the display so what i did in this project is that as soon as this board gets powered on, first of all, my logo will be displayed for a couple of seconds. And after that, it will start connecting to the Wi-Fi and it will uh, do all its tasks. Okay. But first of all, the image, the logo will be displayed. And uh, how, how to add the logo? You can add the logo or any image by converting into in the hex format. Okay. So that hex formatted logo is provided here inside the xbm.h uh, header file, you can say. Okay. Now the question is how to convert your regular image into the hex formatted image. Well, uh, it's very easy. Let me just show you the steps. First of all, you have to click on this link. It will redirect you to one website. Okay, so here is the website. Now here you have to choose the logo, the image that you want to display at the very beginning. Okay, so uh, what I did is I just converted my logo first of all into the format 240 by 320. That's the dim dimension of our display. Okay, so first uh, you have to select the image. After that, just go to the canva.com website where you can resize your image. Uh, here you just make your account and log in into that account. After that, uh, click on create a design. And here just scroll down and click on this plus icon. Here, uh, set the width as like the width is a uh, 240. Okay, uh, it's 240 and the height is 320. And uh, you have to select pixel here. Create, click and after that, just click on create a new design. So, uh, uh, what you can say, canvas will be created, and now you can easily add your image here inside that canvas. And you just need to save that image into a uh, .bmp format. Okay, so that's the basic step, like how you can resize your image. Now, uh, to add the image, you just need to uh, click on this uploads. 
and uh, here you can just upload any of the image and just drag and drop that image here and just resize it using this tool so it's pretty straightforward okay i do have uh, the image already uh, formatted into 240 and 320 uh, dimension so i'll click on choose a file uh, and it's in my desktop okay so yeah here is that file sms.bmp so select that file click on choose uh, click on convert and download and it will automatically download a file which will contain the hex data of the image file okay so it's already downloaded now i will open that uh, file into one of the text editor which is sublime text and here as you can see here is the hex formatted data of your image you just need to copy this whole data like up to the last bracket up to this just copy it and you just need to paste everything uh here okay up to this just paste it and you are done with adding your own image your own logo at the very beginning of the project okay and that was uh, it about the image now let's just go back to the main code okay after that you have to uh, provide the wi-fi credentials like the said name and password of your wi-fi router because this will require internet connectivity because this will be talking to the blink cloud and it is an iot project after that you have to provide the authentication token of your blink project now here i won't be going into detail about the blink projects I, rather i will leave the link of the video in which i've created a home automation project uh, using the blink uh, iot platform okay so i'll leave the link in the description as well as the i button do watch it out so when you make those projects you know that you get an authentication token as soon as you create a new project okay in this particular uh, project i'm controlling two different rooms or we can say two different boards and for that purpose i have provided two different authentication tokens okay one for room one and another for room two okay so that's the reason of adding two authentication token so just create two different ring projects and add your own authentication token here okay so that's the change like these all four parameters you just need to change on your computer on your code and you can directly upload it and it will work okay but still let me make you understand the rest of the code as well okay Straight after that, uh, as we go inside the void setup, as you can see, we are just now beginning the serial communication, beginning the TFT display. After that, we are calling this function called as show Wi-Fi connectivity, which will just connect our ESP32 board with the Wi-Fi whose credentials we have provided. And it will display all the data, like whether it is connecting or getting connected onto the TFT display. So that's the function uh, called here. After that, we are just, you know, erasing the display by calling a fill screen function to turn it black. After that, we are calling the function call as buttons, which will just print all the buttons, like the on off buttons, as well as the room one and room two buttons onto the display. So it's like a structure displayed onto the screen. Okay. So that was all about the setup part. Now going into the loop, in the loop, we are just, you know, uh, fetching or rather monitoring the coordinates or uh, X and Y coordinates of our touch screen. Okay. Like at which particular position our finger is being touched. And according to that, we'll be calling some actions. For example, if we touch at this particular uh, coordinates, like it's already calibrated according to the display. So you don't need to do calibration again, but still let me just uh, uh, make you understand what is this. So for example, if we touch at this particular coordinates, uh, what we are doing is we are just turning the switch one on after that we are providing a switch state as one one now what does this mean this means that we are sending the data one to switch one similarly if we touch at this particular coordinates what we are doing is we are sending the data one that's we are turning on the switch which is two okay the switch i'm sorry switch two is turned on which is displayed here as well so based on different different coordinates which is already calibrated by my team we are calling different different uh, uh what we can say functions okay so what happens after getting those coordinates what we are doing is we are calling a function called as switch control now what's inside the switch control let us have a look so switch control is the function where all the iot part is happening like all the communication is happening okay so whenever we are inside the switch control function we are checking uh like three things like two things we are checking first is which board is selected okay again i left with the board switch so board switch is okay so the board switch is this one so if the coordinates are this we are you know turning the board as two and if the touch coordinate are this we are turning the board to one okay so first we have to select the board and then we can go on to turn on off the switch okay going back to the switch control part so it will first check which board is already selected in case it is one then it will go inside this if condition and if in case the board is two it will go inside this if condition pretty simple after that we are just checking the switch state is it one zero that means is do we want to send the data zero at switch one if is it so what we are doing is 
we are sending the authentication token board as board one because of course this is for the board one after that we are sending that pin value as v1 because we are sending the data to the, uh, uh, according to switch one and we are sending the data zero because here it is displayed at zero okay so as soon as we received switch uh, state one zero we are sending the data zero at switch one and accordingly we are sending the data to v2 v3 v4 pins uh, respectively okay like one and zero turn on and off so that's the pretty simple code uh made using the esp32 using the tft touch screen okay like it's pretty straightforward and simple to understand like when you go through the code you'll be able to understand the importance of each and every line okay so that's pretty much it now before pressing the upload button you first need to connect our project with your esp3 development board according to this connection diagram just to upload the code inside that project after that, just click on this upload button. After clicking on the upload button, you just need to press and hold the boot button on the project. And after that, press uh, the reset button once and release it. Now, this will make our project to go inside the boot mode. Okay, so the code is successfully uploaded and we are done with all the parts of our project. Now, I'll simply insert my project inside the casing. And now, let's just see this project in action. So as you can see, my logo is displayed at the beginning and after that it shows like connecting to the Wi-Fi. It was successfully connected and now as you can see all the buttons are displayed on the screen. Now first, what I'll do, I'll select the room 1 and I'll try to control the appliances of the room 1 or we can say board 1. Okay, so I'm successfully able to control the appliances of the board 1. Now let's just move on to another board. I'll tap on board 2 and let's try controlling the appliances connected to the board 2. Okay, as you can see, I want to control the appliances connected to the board too as well. So yeah, that was all about my touch screen based Wi-Fi control, like the IoT Wi-Fi controller, which is portable, which is small, which is handy and uh, which uses all the components that are easily available in the market. So this is what you have asked me to make. And here is that project. If you love this, if you like this project, if you got to know something new from it, you already know it. Just click on the like button to comment below like what more projects you want uh, me and my team to make for you and we'll definitely try to uh, make those projects also i'd like to tell you that do subscribe our another channel which is techismet shorts on which i used to upload all the short content which is entertaining informative and useful as well so do subscribe to uh, that channel as well whose link is in the description so yeah that being said i'm just ending this video here and now just wait for my next video to explore learn share with me techismet